Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, glory, 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 hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, glory, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty. Good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. How are you all doing? Good morning, good morning. I pray and hope that you all woke up with a praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord, and that you are ready to conquer and be victorious in this day. Amen. So this is Dive Into the Word, a daily Bible reading where we are reading the words of God every single day. So today we are in Exodus 35, 36, and 37. And then Matthew 25, verses 14 through 46. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, Abba Father, we come in of <laughs> my, my, my tongue. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty. For everything that you are, Lord God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for getting us on our way. We thank you for ordering our steps, Lord God, that you are setting our day up, Lord God. And we just pray that you continue to cleanse, purge, and purify, getting us ready and keeping us righteous in your will in your purpose, in your plans, Lord God. I pray that as people of God, the ones that are watching the live, the ones that will watch the replay, that you continue to help us to realize that our life belongs to you, Lord God, and that we are to give our all to you, Lord God. Our trust, we depend on you, we rely on you, and we thank you, Lord God, that you are not a God that will forsake us or leave us in darkness, Lord God. Bring us to your light. Teach us your ways. Teach us your commandments, your precepts. And we thank you that you are filling us with your spirit, Lord God. Filling us with your holy fire. Making us fervent in the spirit, Lord God. And we just glorify you and we thank you, Lord. And we pray that you continue to heal across the, the globe. Heal the people of God, Lord. We pray that you give us energy and strength. We pray for energy and we pray for strength. An increase of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we get into your word, as we read your word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. Teach us. Teach us. Build us. Mold us. And prepare us, Lord God. And we glorify you, give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah. In the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name, amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. Good morning. I know we are still waking up, but we can. we going to get this done. So go ahead and share and invite, share and invite, give you a moment to do that. And I'm going to share uh, 
I'm going to be doing my sharing All right. And when you're sharing, when you're sharing and inviting, don't think that it's me that you're sharing. It, I just happen to be the face that's reading the word of God. <laughs> but you're sharing the word. You're sharing the word and you're and you're inviting others um, to come on every morning to read the words of God, to come and, and, and develop their relationship with the Lord. And so I just, I, I'm just, I just happen to be the face that's doing it and the voice that y'all hear. So, <laughs> but know that you're sharing the word when you share and invite others um, to come on. All right, so let's go to Exodus 35. We are reading Exodus 35, 36, and 37. All right, so 35. And, and of course, I'm pausing. I'm also doing some extra pausing because of the delay that is going on from my phone to your phone, you know, <laughs> or from my, from, from my phone to your desktop. There is a delay. All right, so, and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them these are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them six days shall work be done but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day a Sabbath of rest to the Lord whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skin and chittim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and unk stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded excuse me, the tabernacle, his tent and his covering, his sachets and his boards, his bars, his pillars and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves and all his vessels and the showbread, the candlestick also for the light and his furniture and his lamps with the oil for the light and the incense altar and his staves and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle the altar of burnt offering with his brazen grate great his staves and all his vessels the laver and his foot the hangings of the court his pillars and their sockets and the hanging for the door of the court the pans of the tabernacle and the pans of the court and their cords, the clothes of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. 
And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets of jewels of gold. And every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skin of rams and badger skin brought them. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found chittim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onk stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord hath commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. That 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 is so you know we 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 we're, we're reading the journey of Moses and, and, and how God had them build the tabernacle and the table and the ark. And then we, we, we read how um, they made the golden calf and they angered the Lord. And then Moses came down and, and, and we're, we're going through this journey. And after, you know, after all of that, he didn't even ask for a sin offering or any, he asked for a willing offering. What are you willing to do? You know, that I think that is just, I mean, the loving kindness of God is just awesome because he said, what you're willing to give, bring to me, you know, and we should be willing to give our whole selves to the Lord. You know, it is, it, that is, that is, um, That is uh, awesome. Ooh, excuse me. So I'm 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 gonna read some of the commentary. Of course, I'm pausing. I'm gonna read some. Of it. it says this section describes the preparation of materials and workers needed to build the tabernacle. The people who brought the prized and costly materials contributed them willingly they also worked willingly using god-given skills in design execution and teaching they have both the will and the skills needed for the work that the lord had commanded at the start of exodus the israelites were oppressed slaves forced to make mud bricks and build cities to suit See, let me see. My pages are stuck. Sorry. Okay, Bill suit Pharaoh. He considered the Israelites to be. I don't know if I'm gonna say this word right. Sit, 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 set, set it is, set it, ugh, set tedious and lazy. So he refused to supply enough straw for their work. Now, the Israelites could willingly participate in building a structure for the glory of God for which he had provided the necessary materials and even skills for the workers. That is awesome. So God provided all the materials that they needed. It's like they didn't, it's like they really didn't have to 
They didn't have to search for the materials. They didn't have to. God provided. And then he downloaded the skills. He, he literally downloaded the spirit of wisdom to know how to be able to build. Uh, so well, they spun. They spun back then, but so close together. I mean, he gave them all the skills and the wisdom, the knowledge to know how to do what they need to be able to do. And so he saying, he says, come willingly. What, whatever you will to do, come and do it. And, and that is so merciful. That is so merciful because it's like, you know, they, they, they've been, he, he called them a stiff neck people. And, 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 and that is just such a merciful God, you know, for him to say, whatever you're willing to do, you know. All right. So verse 30, and Moses said unto the children of Israel, see, the Lord hath called by name. Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he had filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. And to devise curious works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass. And in the cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Ahaliab, Ahaliab the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. Them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workmen and of the embroider in blue and in, in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. Amen. Beverly says, I love that God always gives us free will and choice. And it's such a beautiful thing. Yes. Amen. You know, because. And, and and this is after they they did what they this is even after they did what they did you know it's like he he's he he's such a loving God that it's like he's like okay I, I want y'all to come to me freely you know I want y'all to come to me with an open heart you know and and that's what he is that's what he's calling for now come come with an open heart, come freely, come willingly. And I love how it says he put the spirit of God, of wisdom, understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship. So whatever your position is, whatever your position is in Christ Jesus, he's going to give you the spirit of God of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and workmanship. So whatever position you are in, he's going to give you the skills to be able to perform that position, to be able to accomplish that position. Says God announced himself to Moses as Yahweh, the God who forgives. Amen. And that is so beautiful. I just just reading that, you know, just reading that should just really, really ignite a certain type of fire in you to be willing to praise him glorify him acknowledge him you know you should be willing Every, everybody that reads the word of God should get to a place where they are willingly open to the Lord you know so know that whatever position you're in he is going to give you the wisdom the knowledge the understanding 
He's going to give you the skills to be able to accomplish your ministry, accomplish your business, accomplish your job, accomplish whatever God calls you to do. And he is forgiving and loving. Amen. So good morning, Kingdom Citizens. If you are just coming on, Kingdom Citizens, we are in Exodus 36 now. We are in Exodus 36. All right. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded. So, so we're going to say that again. We're going to say that again. The Lord commissions and he commands whatever whatever position you are in Christ Jesus, whatever whatever it is that he wants you to do. He is going to give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding and the skills, the skill set to be able to work work whatever it is he wants you to do and 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 no it's for the house of the lord it's it's for the labor of the lord you know when he even if he sends you out to the field if he sends you across country or whatever he does he's going to give you the knowledge the wisdom and the understanding so verse two and moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it and they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal and they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commanded, Oh, and, and Moses gave commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout camp saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. So I'm going to pause right there. So this is God providing them the materials. So all the people had so much that God had blessed them with. All the materials and everything that they needed to make the tabernacle and the clothes, the, the clothing for Aaron and his sons, the table, everything. They had so much that they were blessed with that Mo Moses had to put up a, a stop because they were bringing freely things every morning, every morning they was bringing. And so they was like, we got more than enough. We, we don't need any more, you know? Like when God, when God blesses you, it'll be more than enough. More than enough. So verse eight, and every wise hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made 10 curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was 20 and eight cubits. 
excuse me, and the breadth of one curtain, four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains, one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the salvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty tachets of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tachets. So it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent after the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size, and he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain, which coupled the second. And he made fifty tachets of brass to couple the tent together, that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red, and a covering of badger skin above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward, and forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle, westward he made six boards, and two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath, and coupled together at the head of thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. Now I I can actually uh, I can actually see that that's a fence the 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 fence the fence that they make around uh I'm actually I'm not a carpenter or anything like that so some of these you know uh or somebody who sews um but I'm actually starting to figure out some of these and that one, that I can tell it's a fence. Standing up boards. Figured that out. <laughs> I can see that that's a fence. Okay. So, verse 31. And he made bars of chitin wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle. And five bars... <laughs> Excuse me, for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen with cherubims made he it of cunning work. And he made there there unto four pillars of chitin wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made a hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of needlework. And the five pillars of it with their hooks, and he overlaid their chapters, chapters, and 
their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass. So I guess I guess um, we were still before we were we were still reading the plans. I guess they hadn't even actually built everything yet, but now we're actually reading them built like literally building everything that that God. So so even after so even after they 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 had the plans, they had the blueprints of the tabernacle, the table, the the ark and everything. Then God was giving them the 10 commandments and things like that, but then they make that golden calf. And so even after that, even after they, you know, messed up, God is still wanting to have a relationship with them. And so that's a forgiving God. Like he is literally forgiving them, showing the love, the kindness, because he still wants them to build the tabernacle, the table, the ark, so he can actually come and, and have a place that he can come and commune with them. And, 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 and it's, it, God is just more beautiful to me. Like, you know, for 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 him for them for him to want them to continue to continue with the plans of building the tabernacle and the in the in the um the ark and the table and things like that 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 is 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 such it's more beautiful this second time around reading this like this is 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 awesome all right, so let's do 37. Any comments? Any comments? All right, chapter 30, Exodus 37. Excuse me. And and Bezalel made the ark of shittim wood two cubits and a half was the length of it and a cubit and a half the breadth of it and a cubit and a half the height of it and he overlaid it with pure gold within and without and made a crown of gold to it round about and he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it even two rings upon the one side of it and two rings upon the other side of it and he made staffs of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staffs into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold beaten out of one piece made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub on the end on this side and another cherub on the other end on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat word were the faces of the cherubims. And he made the table of chittim wood, two cubits with the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Excuse me, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and made there unto a crown of gold round about. Also he made there unto a border of an handbreadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. 
and he made the vessels which were upon the tables, his dishes and his spoons and his bowls and his covers to cover wither of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work, made he the candlestick his shaft, and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, and a knot and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knot and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold, and he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold, for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staffs to bear it with them. And he made the staffs of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the apothecary. Wow. Now, we read... We're reading out of the book, How to Study Your Bible. So um, we have observation, interpretation, and application. And we're also reading that um, we are to pay attention to context. And what I'm really, really noticing is the emphasis on everything being made gold. And especially with the candlesticks. The, the 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 preciseness of um so the candlesticks the the bowl that the candlesticks are to sit in and and the 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 preciseness i can i can see like the 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 branches that is made and it's all made one it's not like it's stuff something that was put together it was all made one by one thing so that's what I'm I'm actually noticing observing how everything has to be made pretty much of gold the candlesticks you know uh, the table and it makes me it makes me want to know what is the significance of gold because I know in Revelation we read that the streets in heaven are made of pure gold but that is they're clear that you can see through it so all these all these things these materials came from God like God provided God provided all these materials for them to be able to do this like they didn't have to go search for nothing he literally provided it and and placed it on the placed it on the earth for them to be able to build this tabernacle and the ark and the mercy seat and the table and the candles down to the candlesticks and the spoons and the bowls and, 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 the, and, the, and the wisdom that he gave them to be able to know how to build all this. I mean, I'm just like, whoa.
so that that's awesome any comments Ooh, y'all have to excuse me any comments I I personally think it's beautiful amazing wonderful and 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 and, and, you know it talks about the wonderful works of the hands of God and you can see the wonderful works in the hands of God through man like man man is being used by God it's his wisdom his knowledge his understanding that he pours into man to be able to craft and build and and be able to do these things Um, Beverly says my observation is that when God delivered his people from Egypt they plundered all those materials from the Egyptians when they left yes that that is true too yes that is because he made sure he did he told them you will not go away empty he said you will not go away empty and that 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 is that is true um because the egyptians they were able to build big old they were able to build like them big old triangle whatever they're called uh and they did they prop they 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 had gold and things they had gold and things and 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 i still i still know i still know that all those things belong to god so that's why he told them borrow borrow get all that you can from your neighbors the egyptians cuz he he still he's still the one that provided all of that and, Beverly says, I further observed that during their hundreds of years of captivity, they learned how to craft the materials being used. God being all knowing was preparing the people with materials and skills to build his temple. Yes. So it's one of those timing things like it's it's saying it's saying in Exodus that he poured the spirit of God in them but he was doing it even while they were yeah I get it the 400 400 years they spent in Egypt 400 years and and I, I I'm sure they they picked up a lot of stuff a lot of things to, that that they learned and um 400 years is a long time so but again that is still that is still something that God God provided even even while they were because even while they were in captivity they increased they increased they they did exactly what God told them to do and 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 it's always going to go back to that first commandment in Genesis when he made man and he told him be fruitful multiply replenish and subdue so they they did exactly what God told them to do and therefore they're able to to build this temple able to build this tabernacle it, I think it's so beautiful I love reading it I love reading it it, it is it is um oh, let me put my I love reading about it it's 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 just
All right, so good morning, Kingdom Citizens. Good morning. We are, we just got through reading Exodus um, 35, 36, and 37. Let's see. Okay, so Beverly says, I further observed that God was the chief architect of his temple. Yes, he provided all the very detailed instructions and directions the people needed to complete the task. He is an awesome and living God because he still gave them a choice to willingly give and build the temple. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That 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 is that is awesome. Yes, I love that. I love it. You know, it just reminds us. It just reminds me that even after you've messed up, see God had a plan. And that plan cannot even be messed up by you. Whatever, whatever the will of God is and his plan and his purpose, not even you can mess it up. Like you can make you make mistakes, you do this, you do that. But the will of God, his plan and his purpose, it's going to happen. So so. When you make mistakes and you mess up, don't beat yourself up too bad. Because if, if God is going to forgive you, don't you beat yourself up so bad. God, God, God forgives. When you realize that you made the mistake, you realize that you messed up. You just ask for forgiveness and, 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 and pick, 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 pick yourself up. And, 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 and keep going because God's plans and his purpose is going to happen no matter what. So they couldn't even mess up the plans of, of God, you know. Uh, Beverly says, I'm not sure of the significance of gold other than its beauty, strength and significance to royalty. That's that's a good observation. Um, because, you know, if we are, if we are, if we are to really understand there's something about gold, gold plays a very, very, um, main part in this tabernacle, like everything pretty much had, so silver, silver, gold, silver, brass it's like in that order you know also those were the materials they got from the Egyptians yep and, and you you just made me also observe something else you, you just made me observe something else when it comes to the significance of the Egyptians. All the materials were given by God, but they were in Egypt. So think about it. <laughs> so the, the children of Israel had to end up in Egypt. Like, Okay, hold on, because my brain is going. <laughs> my brain is going. Okay, so uh, see what Joseph. So, okay, so it was Joseph, right? I'm going to make sure I get the name right. So here's Jacob. His son had to end up in Egypt. And, 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 and he became ruler over all of the land of Egypt. This is where all the, the, the riches, the gold, the wood, everything that they possibly would need. Look, I mean, look at that setup. And so they end up there 400 years 
and the wisdom of God, knowledge, understanding and how to build and everything they're they're learning all of this in it because when, when God provided all the materials and everything it's all in Egypt so they had to go they had to go there in order to get all this all this stuff Beverly, um, Beverly says his being the chief architect used them in the best way amen so that you just you just triggered off more observation if, through my eyes like they had to end up in Egypt in order to get all the materials to learn the skills to 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 and and because they continue to increase and multiply and so they I mean that's that that's set up right there and it's like a lot of times when God set us up, even 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 if there's something bad, like slavery is bad. Slavery is just straight up bad. But they had to go through that in order to get the materials and the skills, the skill set in order to be able to. And it took 400 years. And so. When God said, okay, now I, I hear the cry. I hear the cry of you. So now he sends Moses, get them out just so they can be able to build this tabernacle and be able to build the ark and things like that. And so that also, that also brings me to the knowledge and the understanding. Like a lot of times we won't see what it is that God is doing until after it's all done and, and and we'll look back and be like oh that that's why I had to go through that that's why I had to go through what I went through you know in order to a lot of times there's something that we have to go through to learn something to learn skill sets or to learn you know uh, or 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 gain materials the resources sometimes we have to go through a certain road certain journey to gain the resources to gain the materials to gain the knowledge the wisdom the understanding so it, it it's breaking it down you know and, and a lot of times that journey is not pretty it's not all beds and roses but even roses have thorns. So, <laughs> you know, so reading this word, especially that Old Testament is giving us a more understanding of sometimes our journey to get to the destination. It, it, it's going to be a rough ride sometimes, but we benefit from it. We completely benefit from Whatever it is that we have to go through. All right, so let's move on to Matthew 25, starting with verse 14. So we're going to finish, we're going to finish off Matthew 25. Starting with verse 14 through 46. Now, I really hope that y'all have really gone back and really, really um, read uh, chapter 24 and now 25 because this, this is... Um, this is Jesus teaching the disciples of the end times. He's teaching the disciples the warnings and what to look for. He's, he's, he's opening their eyes. He's opening their eyes and he's giving them knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the end times of what to look for and, 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 and things that will happen. Because 
he he wants us to be prepared. You keep thinking, okay, Beverly says, I keep thinking about your question about gold. It says, I think it, it, I think it boils down to being valuable and being though of as quality and important and royal like God. Now, when he is associated with it, we can, we can call it holy in conjunction with the tabernacle. Go yes, okay. I guess there's a sense of purity in it too. There's a sense of purity in gold. Something about gold that's pure, you know, refined. Um also Yeah, it makes it makes you think, you know. So to have gold, thank it, 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 it just hit me. That's the Holy Spirit, because <laughs> you you know I had the question. I I asked the question so. And it's it's almost like when you say something, it also it's like the Holy Spirit also triggers something in, in <laughs> so it's like he's bouncing it off of you and I. <laughs> but yeah, I I I heard the word. Yeah, I heard those words pure and refined. Like, yeah, it's it's pure. There's purity and refinement in in gold. Like. And see, I wouldn't have, I, it, it wouldn't have hit me. And, and that's why, that's why I say y'all make comments. Y'all make comments because God is putting something in you that could trigger something off in me. And it's like, you know, the Lord just bounced that knowledge back and forth, <laughs> you know. But I, I heard those are the words I heard pure purity and refine re, refinement, you know, um, that I, that that is beautiful. I I just think that's beautiful. You know, I, I, I will never look at gold the same way ever again, like. Like when it came to my when it, when it came to my uh my rings and and things like that I I was not a gold person. Uh when it comes to jewelry, I'm more I I I'm more like like the white gold or silver or you know, I'm so I will never I will never see gold the same way again. Like my my whole perspective for gold has changed, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my whole per perspective for gold has changed. All right. So in Matthew, definitely, definitely, definitely reread Matthew 24 and 25. Um, these are, the, this is very, very important. Um, especially 24, 24 is, uh, talking about the end times this is Jesus speaking and teaching the disciples, um, preparing them, preparing us uh, to be ready and what to look for when it comes to the end times, you know. All right, so verse 14, we are in 25 verse 14. says for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same 
and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he had also gained another two. Other, gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him, with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so th this is one of the most um, famous parables that Jesus spoke. And there's there was a lot of things popping out uh that did not pop out before as as I read this so they they were speaking of money they the, in this parable it was speaking of money but i also i i i also could hear the holy spirit taking things deeper In Proverbs, wisdom, wisdom says you seek me more than treasure. So wisdom also can be considered uh, like spiritual, like having spiritual money. In uh, and, 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 and wisdom, when wisdom says, I have I have all the riches and everything that you need in wisdom. And this is a deeper, this is a deeper meaning of what I was hearing. So when they went out, when the, when the one went out, I, I, I could see not only is he trading, trading money to be able to make five more talents. Um, I could see also disciples. Like he going out and actually even teaching and, and bringing even more people. So this one brought five, the other one brought two, but the other one was like, you know, and I, 
I, I hope I'm making sense because it's, it, it, it just hit me. You know, I, I hear the deeper meanings when it comes to um, the Lord blessing you with something. He's blessing you with something. So go out and make more. So if, if you if you're being blessed with wisdom, knowledge and understanding, go out and make make more pass that wisdom on make more disciples you know um when it comes to money uh be about business and make more you know it 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 it, it just goes into some deep deep levels of everything like when god blesses you when he blesses you with something Again, it goes back to that commandment. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. That, it, 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 for some reason, the Holy Spirit just, he takes me back to that first commandment. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. So whatever God blesses you with, and, and that's, what I'm, that's what I'm seeing. It's like he, he's saying, go out and make more. Go out and make more disciples. Go out and make more. Go out and make more money. Go out and make more. You know, whatever he blesses you with, it's not for you to hide and keep for yourself. Go out and 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 and, and make more. The other thing that I was pointing, the, the other thing that really set with me as observing this word, this parable, is how the the third the third person that went and hid the money look at his reason for hiding the money he hid the money because he's saying you you are the lord and you don't do the work he's like literally in his mind he's saying you don't sow and you don't even gather you don't sow and you don't gather, you don't straw up what you gather. You, it's like he's saying, I do the work and you reap the benefits. And, and he didn't, and, 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 and he's saying, I was afraid. I was afraid because, you know, and I'm going, but most of the time, when we when we get a when we get a job when we go out there and we get a job that's pretty much what happens we do the work when you're an employee you do the work and the owner reaps the benefits of that work and and that's and that's pretty much how it is and that, that's how it's been set up and, and here this guy is like, you know, I just wanted to give back to you what what you gave me, what belonged to you. He didn't he didn't want to do the work. He didn't want to go out there and do the work. And then the Lord ends up benefiting from the work. You know, it's like. I don't know. I see that as I see that as being selfish. Um, I see that as you know um, just being like don't do that. <laughs> That's all I can say. Don't do that. Don't think like that. You know. Because Father God blesses you, blesses you to be able to do the work and he gets the glory. You know, that that's just how it is. Beverly says, it reminds me that we are to use everything that the Lord has provided us for his glory. Yes. When we use the gifts he places within us, he gives the increase, not just money, but more creativity uh, let's see where 
uh hold on okay i lost my spot okay uh but more creativity for example i've always loved to sing i used it for him so then he allowed me to write songs i used that for him so then he gifted me the ability to play basic piano by ear it so forth and so on now i'm writing books and devotionals and the more i use those gifts for him the more he increases himself through those gifts yes i've all my life heard that if you fail to use what god gives you you will use lose the ability that is like the servant who buried the money that his master gave him yes he then lost that single gift he didn't even bother to bank it for the interest perfect you're saying what what was in my head <laughs> what i was trying to get out that's perfect yes so because even though it's talking about money i can hear like the deeper deeper things like like everything that god gives you that he blesses you with he he wants you to go out and multiply it you know he wants you to multiply whatever it is that he has blessed you with and so yeah you you bury it you bury it then you lose it he takes it and he gives it and blesses those who who are out there multiplying what god gives them yeah that that's that's perfect that is perfect and, and it also makes you you know want to go back and rethink and be like lord okay <laughs> now that i know you know and, and and I I believe that when when you come to the knowledge of that, you know, when you come to the knowledge of that, um, you know, God can restore. He can re he will and can restore whatever you know, uh, whatever He put in you. Um, Beverly says so. It is up to us. Whew, excuse me. Sorry. So it is up to us to use everything that God gives us for that benefit of his kingdom because it glorifies him. It glorifies God. Amen. Yeah. So you don't you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be like that third guy. You, you want you want to use your gifts and your talents and, and work and multiply so God can get glorified. You already know that that is the pur that is the purpose that is the plan, so God will get the, the glorification of it. And you know what? I will do I will do whatever God need me to do because God God is such a loving God that He doesn't just keep it to Himself. He's not one he's not one of those bosses that keeps the benefits to himself. He doesn't. Like he literally pours his glory. He gets glorified and he pours his glory onto you. Like like that that the relationship that you develop between you and the father is is such a beautiful beautiful thing. You know, I'm a, I'm a big, big, big sap when it comes to love and, and things like that. And, and the Lord God knows. I think that is so beautiful. The, the relationship. All right, so we are at verse. Whew. We are at verse 31. Verse 31, um, Matthew 25, verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. 
as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was and hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. This 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 setup that Jesus Christ is saying is su such a beautiful beautiful thing, and and I'm hearing so much. I'm hearing so much. Like God wants us to take care of each other, and he's he's breaking it down. To the hungry, to the thirsty, to the naked, to the sick, to the imprisonment, to the stranger. He not asking you to look at anything else. He not asking you to look at color. He not asking you to look whether or not it's a male or female. He not asking you to look at any. Are they hungry? Feed them. Are they thirsty? Give them drink. Are they naked? Give them clothes. Are they a stranger? That means you don't know them whatsoever. Are they in prison? Are they sick? He's saying when you when you do this to them, you are doing it to him. That means you are feeding him. You are clothing him. You are giving him drink. You are visiting him when he's sick. When, when, when all these things that you do to the least, you're doing it to him. And if, 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 if you don't get no other understanding, you, that means we are that means no one, no one should go without. 
And it even also breaks down, it even also breaks down to the selfishness of this man. The man, he was given a talent and he sat there and digged and put it into the earth. That means he didn't use anything. He didn't, he didn't use his talent. He didn't use because he didn't want to do the work and someone else reap the benefits. So a lot of us, some of us, we're out there working 60 hours and, and, and y'all don't want no one else to reap the benefits of your hard work. Well, guess what? When you, when you think like that, you're going to be a goat and not a sheep. I want to be a sheep. I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep. I am a sheep of the Lord. My my last dime I will give. Like I'm I'm serious. That's that's just me. That's how I am. You know? It, and it's something that is in you. Like God puts it in you. So you you work hard, you do you do all of that. But go and feed. Go and feed those who aren't working. Go and feed those who don't look at don't look at the fact that they they they're able bodies and they should have a job and blah 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 and why are they out here homeless and things like that. God didn't ask you to do all that. He didn't ask you to worry or be concerned about why they are in the position that they're in. How, how do you not know that they're in that position just to see if you'll go and feed them? How do you not know that they're in that position, they're thirsty, just to see if you'll give them drink? It could be a test for you. A test for me. You know? That, that could be Jesus walking homeless, thirsty, hungry. Just to see if you're going to feed them. Just to see if that stranger that you don't know. It literally takes me back to the testimony that I've, I've told this testimony before. Where I was getting put out of my housing. I was getting put out and I literally had to ask a stranger, a neighbor, if I could stay in their shack in their backyard and a stranger at my job, we didn't even know each other, she literally hands me the keys to her truck and tells me, go find you a place. She didn't know me. She didn't know me from... She didn't know if I would take off of her truck and never come back, nothing. But she hands me the keys to her truck and she says, go and find you a place to live. See, if, 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 if she hadn't have done that, I don't know where I would be right now. Just that small act. I'm a complete stranger to her. And she gives me the keys to her truck. It's, it's those small little things. You don't know what you're doing when you obey God. When you, when you obey God, God says to do this. Feed, clothe, give drink, visit the sick, visit those that are in prison. When, when you do these things, you really don't know what you're doing because you, you, you could be placing someone in a, in a position that God would only trigger by, by your act of kindness, you know, by your act of, of love for people.
do this do this knowing that you're doing it for 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 Jesus when when you do this for them it's because you're doing it for Jesus you know And, and that's that's even that's even breaking it down to blessing the ministries that go out there and do the footwork. Do you know that when you sow seed into the ministries, you're still sowing you're sowing seed for them to be able to do this very thing. So therefore, you are partakers of it. When you bless when you bless ministries with financial backing, or bless them and and and, and donate. When you're given to church, when you're given to the church houses that actually go out and do this, they, they, the prison ministries, things like that, they actually go out, you're, you're sowing seed into that and you're, and you're, you're partakers, you're still among the sheep. You want to be among the sheep and not the goat. Okay. That, this is so very, very important. You know, so very important. Any comments? Any other comments? Any other comments? So who wants to be a sheep? I do. <laughs> who wants to be a sheep? I don't want to be a goat. I'm not a goat. <laughs> Any other comments? This 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 should also give you a whole new perspective on how you look at when you when you work. When you work and you make money, when God blesses you with a job, whether it's minimum wage or not just just like just like uh with the talents just like with the talents he says he says he gave to every man according to his several ability so some of us our ability is minimum wage some of us get to be in the corporate house or some of us you know um where, wherever our ability is so multiply that if you're making minimum wage multiply it that's what god blessed you with he knew that's all you could handle that's all you could take care of learn to be a good steward of that and multiply it. How do you multiply it? Well, for one, being a giver, giving will always multiply anything. Giving will always multiply what you have. And then learn to invest in things like that, you know? Because in Matthew, we already know we're not to worry about where our food comes from and where our clothes comes from. So if we don't worry about where food and clothes come from and, you, and you've been blessed with a job, even if it's a McDonald's job, um, you could be working at Wendy's or Taco Bell and you're making bare minimum. God still wants you to multiply. He wants you to multiply. He wants you to learn how to increase from that position. I don't know who who this is for, and, and, and I, I, I this this is for me too. This is for me too. But increase, learn to increase and multiply from whatever position you are in. Learn to know that it's not just for you. Get out of the selfish mindset 
and know that what whatever position you in whether and, and and that's why I'm starting from minimum wage you make a minimum wage or you could be an entrepreneur starting your own business and you ain't making nothing but when you get that dollar you get that two dollar you get that three dollar you got to learn to be a good steward and learn how to increase it but also share you still got God nowhere in there is he saying that he's looking at your pocketbook. He said, I'm hungry, feed. I'm thirsty, give drink. I'm naked, clothes. I'm in prison, I'm sick, visit me. I'm a stranger, take me in. He not, he not asking you what position are you in or do you even have the money. He's not asking you, do you have it? Because God is going to provide it. He gives you the heart to give. He gives you that heart to go out there and do the work. He's going to give you the provision. The victuals. <laughs> Everything that you need. Don't don't look at the fa- don't look at well I, I barely make enough for my bills. I barely make enough to provide food on my table. I he didn't ask you to look at all that. He didn't. He didn't ask, if if you let those things distract you from doing what God asked you to do, you you're going to mess up and you become a goat. Don't don't look at what you don't have. Don't look at what if you continue to look at what you don't have is going to hold you back. It'll hold you back. It'll 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 stagnate you. It'll make you hesitant. It, it, it does all kinds of things when you look at what you don't have. Stop looking at what you don't have. You know, I even look at it like this. You, 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 you got barely, you got a a bag of beans and a bag of rice and, and, and a bag of flour. And, and that's all you have in your, in your house. You know how much that can stretch out? Even, even if it's one person that you go and feed. And then you feed the rest in your family. A bag of flour can feed many people. A bag of beans can feed many people. Bag of rice. Like, and and you got to know how to take the little stuff and make it big. It's even just like when when Jesus was was out there and 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 he said feed the people. There's over thousands and thousands of people and the disciples are looking at what they don't have. <laughs> and Jesus is like, "What?" The disciples are looking at what they don't have and Jesus turns around and look at what they do have. He says, "Give me what do you got?" And they say five five fishes and two loaves of bread. So what does he do? He he prays over it and he breaks it and he increases it. He gave you that same ability to be able to do that. So if you're making minimum wage, and I believe minimum wage has actually finally gone up to what, maybe ten dollars an hour. Um, I I I I haven't been in the workforce uh, for a, a quite some time now, um, but um, I, I do believe that in Texas, most most businesses are starting people off at ten dollars an hour. So you take that $10 an hour and you increase it. You take that $10 an hour and, you know, 
And so even when it comes to your food, you buy things that you know will stretch. Bag of beans, bag of rice, flour, things like that, you know. And then you learn how to be a good steward of that and watch it increase. I'm telling you. Next thing you know it, you're you're doing you're making more. Don't don't sit there and and take your ten dollars an hour, and 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 sit there and start buying McDonald's and things. No, buy you a bag of beans and buy you some rice and and some flour and 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 sugar. Make you some flat cakes, flour, sugar, water, and them beans. Fry, fry. <laughs> you gotta learn how to do. That. <laughs> you gotta learn how to do that and press, 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 press forward and increase it. Learn it and increase and be good stewards. That way you can go out there, and when you cook, when you cook for your family, cook for a few homeless people. Put it in some things. Go out there and say, hey, I, I cooked this today. Here you go. Here, here's something to eat. You know, I, I I could just talk about I could just talk about that that verse thirty one through forty six all day. I could I could I could stay on here and talk about that all day. But definitely, definitely, you go back and read Matthew twenty four and twenty five. And really, really let these words write itself on the tablets of your heart. Because these words, the words of God is life changing. The words of God reading the Bible is life changing. It will change you the way you see things, your perspective, everything. So stay in the words of God. Know that we come on every morning at 530. Um, if you miss this, go back and watch the replay. We read Exodus 35, 36, and 37. And then Matthew 25, verses 14 through 46. Share and invite. Because everyone needs to get into the words of God every single day. Everyone that you love. Share, invite, and... uh Know that I love you, love you, love you. I really do. And I pray and hope that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.